Hello, everyone. My name is Yong Kang He. I'm a lead cloud native SE of Custom by Veeam covering APAC region. I, a little bit about myself, I had over 20 years experiences in IT. Uh, by now, I got uh, over 24 times multi-cloud certified. I'm a father of three lovely kids and uh, I live in Singapore. So today's session, I will talk about uh, Kubernetes on Alibaba Cloud. So here is what I'm going to show you today. So I will walk you through how to create a ACK cluster. So the ACK uh, cluster, that's Alibaba's Kubernetes distribution. So short as ACK, that stands for Alibaba Cloud Container Services for Kubernetes. So think about it, it's a managed Kubernetes cluster. So first of all, I will demonstrate how to create an ACK cluster. Typically about 10 minutes. And secondly, I will walk you through how to navigate the different uh, options within the ACK cluster. Okay, let me jump into my console. So I already logged into Alibaba Cloud Console. Now you can see I already have two ACK cluster running, but let me start from the beginning. If you wasn't, you're not in this, this ACK page, you can click uh, the left top corner. There is a menu bar, and from here, you can uh, either do a search, so, or you can find the ACK cluster from under Elastic Computing. It's called a Container Service for Kubernetes. So most likely, people might prefer just a search. If I type a cube, you can see on the Elastic Computing Containers, there is a container services for Kubernetes. I click this one, it will launch the ACK cluster you know, management page. So the first task, I'm going to create a new cluster. On the right hand side, you can see there is a button called Create a Kubernetes Cluster. I click Create a Kubernetes Cluster it will launch the screen to allow you to uh, set a name for the Kubernetes cluster. I give you the name ACK for Young Stray because one and two are already occupied. And there are two different uh, specifications for the cluster. One is a professional, one is a standard. So what are the difference? If you click the contrast, you will see the difference. And there is a table to highlight the differences. Uh, basically, a professional managed Kubernetes cluster give you more flexi flexibility, give you more controls, and not only supporting up to 1,000 nodes, mm. but also give you all different uh, control, like uh, you can access API server, you can take the ETCD backup, etc. So for the standard Kubernetes cluster, you can only manage up to 100 nodes, and none of the below options are supported. So basically, you can't manage the node pool. You can't apply the different, you know, control the scheduler. You don't have the backup. Or you can't access the API server, etc. Okay, let me close this one. So I keep the option as professional. So for the region, I just simply choose Singapore. Uh, where is Singapore here? And uh, for the version, so right now they provided two versions, uh, 1.20.4 and 1.18.8. I will leave the late, latest 1.20. And for container runtime, they still give you the option to choose either container D, Docker, or sandbox D. So I leave the container D as a default. For the VPC, I use my default VPC, VPC for Yong one and for network plug-in, I was using uh, Flannel. 
for the vSwitch, uh, that's a kind of like a switch uh, network configurations. Uh, I need to make a selection here, tick this option. So I already have the switch configured. And there is a little bit uh, other configurations uh, like IP address. Uh, you want to set uh, how many IP addresses per load uh, and the, the port the side blocks, service IP side blocks. If you don't really have any uh, any idea how you want to, you know, customize, you just leave it as a default. I leave a majority of these as a default. One important thing, I want to expose API server with an elastic IP. And the reason is uh, without this option enabled, you basically, you, you can't access from the internet, okay? And uh, what else? Delete protection. So you might have taken this option. So before you remove the delete deletion protection, basically you are not allowed to delete the cluster. For the resource group, I just choose my existing resource group, RG for Yong Wang. And then I can move to the next page. Uh, click next work configurations. And from here, we give the option to choose uh, what exactly work node instance type you want to use. So by default, you got a three work nodes created. So I'm going to choose a smaller instance. So let me go to the general purpose one. For the general purpose one, the smallest I can choose is, I, yeah, two CPU was grayed out. I choose the for CPU, 16 gb memory, general purpose type G5. So I made the choice selection. So for the testing purpose, uh, I, I don't really need three nodes. So I lower the number work node to number one. And for the system disk, uh, I also, I don't need 120 gigs. Uh, I make it smaller. I believe the minimum is 40 gigs, so I change it to 40. Yeah, and for operating system, I leave the Alibaba Cloud Linux as a default. Uh, for the logon key pair, I also use my default key for Yong one Move to the next component uh, configurations. So there are a lot of settings uh, like a uh, monitoring agent or a lot. Uh, I don't have a lot uh, group configured yet. So I have removed this option. The rest of them just leave it as a default. Go to the next to confirm the order. So from this screen, it gives you the options. You can have an idea how much you're going to pay for this particular you know, ACK cluster. As you can see from the screen, uh, it also run the dependency checks. On the bottom of the screen, you can see for the ECS, uh, that's the Elastic Computer Service. So you need to pay like a, you know, 26 cents per hour and plus ACK, you need to pay nine cents per hour. So I agree on the terms and then click uh, create a cluster. So once I click uh, create cluster, so you can see the job kicked off. So you can see on the screen, it takes about 10 minutes to create the cluster. Before the cluster is ready, uh, one option is I can pause the recording and uh, walk, wait for the cluster up running and then show you uh, what are the options, so what you can do from the console. So instead of a wait, I might just go back to my create the cluster page. Uh, if I click overview page, you can see I got a three cluster here. So the number three actually it's still you know building right now. So what I can do is I can show you the other two cluster. If I want to navigate to see what exactly I can do from Alibaba Cloud Console, so I click the cluster name. So the first cluster ACK Yong One. 
click the name, you can see all the different uh, options that are here. So first of all, when you click the overview of the cluster, you can see your application status, uh, how many deployments, uh, how many ports, how many of them are online, or how many of them are offline, and I know the status. And down to the bottom, you can see, is there any events related to the cluster? And also, move down to the bottom, you can see the CPU utilization and also memory utilization. On the left side of the menu, you can see under the node, you can, if I click a namespace, you can see these are all the namespaces listed from all, uh, this particular cluster. And under workloads, you can see here are my deployments. I got a PostgreSQL running from all the cluster. And I also got uh, other stuff, for, for example, like a state for sets. If I click state for sets, I don't really have any state for sets running here. But if I click a port, you can see from the uh, from here, you can see I already got the namespace PostgreSQL selected. But if I want to choose the other namespace, uh, for example, WordPress, so basically you can filter and see what are my field by the namespace. And then you can see the pods status inside of that particular namespace. So for example, here WordPress, I got one port is actually not really running very good. Under the network, you can see your services, your ingress. So for example, I got the service for WordPress and also for WordPress SQL. And the ingress, that's the basic up label how to the load balance in services. And I moved on to the next one is the configurations. So you've got the configure maps, you've got your secrets. And under the volumes, you can see I've got the storage class by default. Alibaba Cloud provides all different uh, storage class. Uh, you've got a disk Ali Cloud dash disk dash SSD, and you also have the enhanced SSD and the plus a few others. And from the persistent volumes, uh, these are persistent volumes right now was used by uh, my applications. And if you can also see the persistent volume claims. Right now I got my SQL, there is a volume claim and uh, there is a WordPress also, there is a, a volume claim. Yeah, under the applications, you can actually deploy, allow you to deploy from a helm to deploy the applications. So right now I've got three applications running here, but if you want to deploy other applications, so you can click the app catalog. And from here, you can do some search or you just find the application you want to deploy. So I'm not going to show you right now, but for example, if you want to deploy NGX, you just select the NGX, provide a few settings, it actually give you the instructions on how to deploy NGX to Alibaba Cloud ACK cluster. Okay, let me go back to the last screen. Last one again. And from here, you got another option is uh, all the events, event logs, Prometheus monitoring, and then you can install the Prometheus monitoring agent. Uh, I don't have the Prometheus agent installed yet. And from the UI, you actually you can up, upgrade the cluster. If there is a newer version is here, we Alibaba Cloud allow you to upgrade the cluster from the UI. And the security, security you can configure the different uh, you know. RAM users, different RAM rules, and also you've got the uh, PSP, uh, that's the port of security policy. So to me, I think uh, Alibaba Cloud uh, makes a lot easier. A majority of the tasks uh, you traditionally, you need to run the kubectl command. So now you can do from all the UI.
Yeah, that's pretty much all I want to cover for today. Let me go back to check to see if the cluster. Yeah, the cluster actually is still building the EZK for Yong Street. So I'm not going to wait. So that's what I want to cover for today, how to create the ACK cluster. It's super easy. You just follow the prompts step by step to create the cluster. It took, took probably around 10 minutes. And uh, I also quickly walk you through how to navigate within the cluster page. Yeah, uh, I guess that's all I want to cover for today. And uh, thank you for your time. And if there is any questions or any feedback, any comments, please feel free to drop me an email or follow me uh, by the link in. And or you can you know follow me via Twitter as well. Thank you very much. Have a good day.